you, you know, let's talk about the performance bond guarantee, right? Uh, you, you say we must give you a performance bond. Payment guarantee. Payment guarantee. Payment guarantee. But you already have it in your price. No, no, no. We don't. Uh, uh, when, when you build a school for us, you don't build it at 5,500 to square meter. You build it at 10,000 rand a square meter. <laughs> so, so you've already factored it into your price, uh, actually. In the, but, but no, I'm just, I'm just being silly, sorry. Uh, no, the, the issue that you're actually raising is an issue. Every second contractor that I talk to actually is talking in the main around the exclusionary nature of the performance bonds and, and those kind of, kind of guarantees at the end of the day. So, so we are actually looking in that so that we clarify it actually to the rest of the family on how actually that needs to needs to be managed uh, basically moving mo moving forward uh, especially in an environment if it's going to be exclusionary right. now uh, Chris uh, you're talking about the C CIDB conversation and working actually in silos now let's let's talk quickly uh, uh, you see there's uh, maybe, maybe in government there are also too many different bodies and committees and then we end up just talking most of the time you see you run the risk in getting into that but we've got the body which is known as FOSAD, which is the Forum of South African Director Generals. Then they extend it sometimes to include provinces, and we interact a lot with municipalities, uh, basically, basically in there. So, so the work that we do finds expression in many of those particular places uh, uh, at the end of the day. So what we will look at is what are the pressing issues for the day that we feed into that particular agenda and we raise this thing. If you can think about the 30 ba day payment issue, you will be shocked to learn, and I was just as shocked to learn actually, that this is an issue that cabinet endorsed in 2011. That this payment, if, if my memory serves me correctly, right? This was before my time in this job, right? So when this thing hyped up again, I went to go and do a bit of research and I realized, but cabinet said, DJs, you must pay people, you must report to us, you must do this. Then I asked myself, but is cabinet not doing its work? Because you need to then ask for those particular reports to come back. Who's the guilty party? How do you solve this thing? So, so I tend to say, how do we move more action oriented on this thing? Now, there's something, Greg, that we will, we, we need to make time, uh, my team, to come and present to you and we'll actually involve, because we also involved with the CIDB on this thing. We, we have finalized now a infrastructure procurement standard for the state, right? I'll not go into details on it, but it's going to have an impact actually on your members, yeah, and everybody around the community. And I think we need to make an opportunity, uh, be given an opportunity actually to come and present and discuss this thing actually with your good selves. Uh, uh, the, the other issue that we will possibly also make an opportunity to talk to is from the first of, now in the, the treasury regulations that deals with supply chain, supply chain was just thought of as goods and services procurement. It wasn't, there was no way thinking of infrastructure procurement. So, so from the first of April next year, we're releasing regulations which the CIDB and Inband MF has helped us with where we're now including infrastructure regulations actually even in that, where we will be you know, regulating how infrastructure procurement actually needs to be managed in, 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 in there. there. There are some, some parts, Chris, where we need to actually work in silos to accelerate. It may not be ideal for now, but we need to move quite fast. Uh, and then we'll do quite a bit of the consultations actually a bit later related, related, related to that. Uh, we, we, in Ba, we had quite a bit of a conversation on, on in service of the state, and this is where the legal opinions came in and said, no, but even if you use that terminology, you are seen to be employed by the state, finish and clear. And that's the reason why we're accelerating in reorganizing quite a lot of uh, that particular kind of regulations, just to make sure that uh, that is clarified uh, 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 there. Tabo, the <laughs> This guy was very rude to you, you know. He, 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 after you talks, and then he says, hey, look up politica, come on. Let's sing it, sing it, come on. You know, 
I think the, 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 the main issue that you are raising is how do we build capacity for the state so that the system doesn't rely only on a few individuals. And I share your sentiments fully. If I get run over by a bus tomorrow, the, the things must happen at the end of the day. And, and, and some of the people who have visited me in my office, uh, of your colleagues here, will tell you, uh, in fact, for the past two years we've assembled quite a, from our side, quite a formidable team, I would say, of individuals. That I was actually out of action for five months, by the way, because of my back operation, right? But in fact, they have worked quicker in the five months I wasn't there. Uh, and that is what you actually want from the, from the you, 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 you see? So, so uh, we have visited each and every director general in government. We, we sat to them in groups and that. We've explained to them the importance of supply chain management as a strategic function in, 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 in their departments. People are shocked. I say, if you get a budget, you must translate your budget in deliverables and tangibles. Do you think these things happen automatically? They don't. You see, it's supply chain that takes you from rents to tangibles. And supply chain has got this function. So we, up to a point where people started to realize, oh, no wonder they can't deliver anything or they deliver but substandard, and so you go, you see. So, so there's a bigger change management in addition to capacity table that we continuously working on. Uh, the, the, the other issue that we're looking into, and we, we're working on, by the way, is the concept of strategic procurement. People think when you buy this, the process to buy this bottle of water and to build this building is the same process. No, it's not the same. You see? So you need to understand the industry. How do you interface with the industry? Who are your big players in what areas? If you want to stimulate certain parts of the industry, how do you go about it? So there's quite a bit of a strategic framework, a uh, sourcing framework that we're actually working on to really make sure that people look at supply chain completely, completely differently. Uh, uh, there. And I'm glad you've asked the, the question around are we moving in unison as government? Essentially, that's your question, right? And, 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 and it is a fair question because the fights between Treasury and the DTI are not helping the state. They are not, right? And, 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 and I think we, out of this conversation, if we were to get together and say, but what is the agenda for the state? And how do we work together so that these things find expression properly? out there is going to be very important because the frustrations that we have as departments there are the frustrations that spill over into industry and then we don't speak as one voice and we sow actually quite a bit of confusion uh, within that. So it's going to be a challenge not only for myself, for the DTI, for EDD, the DPE and all of those departments that actually manage the system actually to work together actually in unison because if we're not going to do that we will just uh, waste our, 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 our time. In, in the public procurement bill, we're going to clarify dispute resolution. Clearly, what is the process to deal with disputes and how do you go about? That's the one part of it. But then there's a part of corruption on the other side. And say, how do you deal with this thing? You guys would have learned that John Block has been convicted for corruption yesterday. The case took the better part of five, six years just to put together and to get to conviction. You see? All right? So, so we're looking at, at the issue around special courts. But your special courts will not help you if the hawks are useless, maybe, or the SIU is not helping you. I'm, I'm plant, actually, around it. So what you want, and I suppose that's the point you're making, Tabo, is to say, how do we make the entire integrated justice system to, to work in tandem so that we move the system in a particular, in a particular direction? is going to be uh, uh, quite a bit of important. Uh, is it Lekete, no? It, I hope I got, I got the name right. Which, which is something I need to be paid for being here. No, I'm serious. <laughs> I need to be paid to be here. Uh, 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 the contract for a, 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 a construction contract is even different, different from your kind of contract for, 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 for consulting at the end of the day. 
Can I ask the Black Business Council in the built environment to give us model contracts that we can use as the state? When will you give it? Tomorrow. <laughs> you should have uh, at least some of them already. Because then all that we, we do, we get them, we give them to our legal people, they actually go through it. And then we say, when, because we're releasing the standard and infrastructure regulations, we can issue model contracts already for all of those. And then, and, and then instead of me going to hire a consultant, go out and attend, uh, and it's another five months down the line, you guys can give me something within two months or less than two months. It's OK, uh, uh, Greg, you, you, you guys will help us actually with, with, with that. The, then the, the other issue that you, 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 you've raised is the issue around board members. I suppose we're clarifying. We, we will deal with that matter. Uh, the, I don't know. Uh, we, we, we need, uh, I need to fully understand the non-national issue, the non-nationality. Uh, 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 issue. Uh, is there something in our legislation that prohibits them from doing business with us? Is there something? Uh, talk? I can uh, just clarify it for me, please. They get to benefit from economic empowerment, okay. whereas the law says no. Oh, okay. you, you understand? Yeah. And then they get prioritized. They should be like anybody else. No, no, no. no. Uh, I have. Yeah. I have, I have. In, fact, in fact, we just need to clarify. <laughs> The other issue why things actually go wrong in supply chain is twofold. Demand management is, is completely ignored in the system. All right? So if you take education, education should know in Gauteng. We've got so many learners. We're going to build so many schools. We're going to stagger them over the next few years in this particular kind of way. And basically, so you go. So that when they plan their procurement, it doesn't stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. It becomes a continuous thing. Because where you guys are sitting, you gear up, and then work dries out, and then you slow, then, then you must go down again. And then, and then so you go. So because they move in that cycle as a department, it creates that particular kind of cycle actually, actually within the system. That's one area. The other area has got to do with the drawing up of specifications. Because we get specifications wrong, you can even have a model contract, by the way. If the specifications that were designed are the, are the incorrect ones, your contract actually, the end, means, means nothing, right? But it, and, and this thing actually costs the state a lot of money, by the way. Because you tailor it for your friend, the friend actually comes in, they get it, and then you get to deviation and variations. So this guy has come up, he said, I'll build a school which he should have built for 35 million, I'm going to build it for 25 million. He gets it. By the time you open your eyes, that school is 60 million. And then you had a lot of variations, actually, within, within the system. We're dealing, in any case, uh, with, uh, with that. So we, 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 we're very cognizant on the specific. And what I said to Greg and the team, by the way, if they see a tender that goes out that is cockeyed, they must write to us and say, can it, there's this tender, just check it quickly, and then we go in and then we deal with it. Uh, my colleague from, from, is it from the professional side is, is, is gone. Now, let's come to BEE quickly, right? Now, the, uh, I saw some of the specifications and some of the, how the tender gets put together. If you want this job, you must have a PhD in <laughs> civil engineering. You must have 20 years experience. Now, think about it. That was predating us. So I'm already excluding you, by the way, because I'm going to give that guy 10 points. So by the time I get to, to where we qualify, Greg, you only get three points. And then you already, when it comes to functionality and all of these things, the system has kicked you out long before you even come to the debate about 1910 uh, at the end of the day. So th there is that, that we say, you know, how do we solve this thing? But People were shocked. I was, I, was, uh, I was talking at another place. Oh, in fact, I was talking to civil society, right? And Corruption Watch, all of these guys, right? And I asked them a question, which I'm going to ask you. How many national departments do we have? OK, I can see you struggling. Uh, uh, how many provincial departments in total do we have? 
we've got 278 municipalities. Mm -hmm. But in every municipality, you've got different departments. You're going to have water, you'll have energy, you've got, you're going to have roads, storm water, you're going to have all of that. If you add the SOEs, everybody, at the end of the day, we've got close to 1,000, over 1,000 government entities. Right? Now, why do I say this? It becomes rather difficult to say you will monitor everything related to that. You see? So, so as I'm talking to you now, there's possibly over 2,000 tenders that are being adjudicated, awarded, and, and basically so you go. You see? So we can put the systems in Tabo, we can put many of these things in. But the best way of monitoring a system is the people on the ground who are affected by it. And where we sit, we say, we provide you with an opportunity where you are aggrieved or you pick up something that you can tell us so that in real time we can intervene and actually just make sure that, uh, uh, that, that things uh, happen basically. In, in a particular in a particular kind of way uh, I don't know if I've jumped to one or two of you guys it doesn't mean you are not important eh? you are very 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 important but again we are busy finalizing the uh, public procurement bill the minister will make an announcement next week Wednesday on it it should be out for comment in January next year this is your opportunity if you don't make use of this opportunity you are gone, right? You are gone. You, you know what Soli said to me yesterday? He met with Jimmy Man. Mzwanel. Mzwanel. Mzwanel is at the uh, is advi advisory council of the president, no? So he <laughs> met him, what to say. And, 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 you know, and then he teased Jimmy. He said to Jimmy, Jimmy, where were you when the triple PFA was written? So Jimmy says, says, no, you must remember, every piece of legislation, when it gets written, it's first a bill, it gets consulted on, and then it goes through the particular kind of process. You see? So, so I said to him, no, but you were unfair towards Jimmy. He said, no, but I wanted him to tell me that I'm unfair towards him, but he didn't, he didn't tell me that, uh, uh, actually. You see, because uh, uh, this was in 2001, two. You must remember, we were still building the system actually at the time, you see? So, so what was put on into, into circulation at the time may have been relevant, people thought, at that time. But things have changed now. It doesn't mean because you've missed the boat there, you shouldn't, be ad you, you shouldn't adapt actually to change uh, with this thing. How do we write things so that they become actually kind of dynamic? Because we can write this bill actually today and then you find it three years down the line that, oh, but there was this something that we've actually missed. How do we compensate, basically? For but the point that I make in conclusion is you have an opportunity. Please make, an opportun uh, make use of the opportunity. Don't wait for us to publish it for comment. Put your thoughts in so that by December, when we process many of these things, you've got an added advantage where you, you've made advance you know inputs actually on that on behalf of my team the treasury and and that uh, greg and your team uh, yeah, i really want to express my gratitude for this opportunity to share actually the work that that we do indeed this is one south africa we all love in it uh, i'm from alex i don't know whether that's part of the one south africa but i'm also there <laughs> see. so with those words thank you very much and see you again Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief Procurement Officer of the Republic of South Africa, as I call him. A warm round of applause as he leaves us. CPO, thank you very much for your presence here today. I must mention that he did call me this morning that he was not feeling well, but he, he, he made sure that he does come and be with us before he goes and sees the doctor. So uh, uh, good luck to him uh, with his appointment with the doctor. We shall then move swiftly, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to our next presentation. But before that, I, I, I have a list of people here that uh, uh, keep on arriving as we are um, you know, taking our presentations. And it's important that we know who is in our midst so that even as we network, because part of us being here today is to know who's who uh, and, and we can network and see how we can advance our businesses. 
um, uh, I would like to introduce to you the uh, treasurer of the BBCBE, Mutara Matoto, ke na muta chori ndi challenges a runa mon, mekile kuinana. I'll also like to introduce to you the head of policy at the BBC, Ndate Tsepo Matlala. And I know the following people have spoken already, but I would like them just to rise so that people can recognize them and see who they are. Uh, our CEO at the Black Business Council, Ndate Mohale Ralebizo, if you can just rise, sir. We also have in our midst a man who is tasked with a very serious responsibility of transforming this industry. We have given him the instruments and he must now go on with implementing so that we can see a transformed industry. The CEO of the Construction Sector Charter Council, Ndate Tabo Masombuka. We have in our midst our regulator, the CIDB. And let me just preface the introduction of the team from the CIDB with the following. As the BBCBE, we fully support and are behind the CIDB. Yes, there are challenges, but that's why we are here, so that we can address those challenges. It is our institution, and we are going to work together with the CIDB to ensure that all the concerns that come from you and the rest of our members out there are addressed. Now, the team is led by the acting CEO, Mayor Inba Thumberin. If you can just rise, ma'am. And I'm going to introduce some of your colleagues that I have seen this morning. And Dr. Ibrahim Mula. Next to him, Mekotli, if you can just rise. Uh, I don't know when Dr. Jemen Patele disappeared to, but I saw him earlier today. So that is the team from the CIDB which is in our midst uh, today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, like I said earlier, we, we have stalwarts in the BBC and the BBCBE, and I'm going to quickly run through them so that they can also be recognized. Dr. Tandin Love, you have spoken. Can you please just rise again so that they can see how beautiful you look? <laughs> Dr. Danisa Baloy. And that day, Patrick Messing. Now, one of the things that we do as the BBCB. Oh, no, no, I'm coming. I'm coming. <coughs> I'm coming. Uh, one of the things that we do is that we represent you as members in very important institutions that are part and parcel of our industry. Now, on an annual basis, we deploy people to these very important institutions. And uh, some of the, our employees are here. I'm going to introduce them and also show you where we, we place them. And one of the stalwarts that I've missed, Kintate Datlas Situke, Datlas Situke, please stand up so that people can see you. I would like to introduce Mayor Martha Sidumedi. She is representing us at the CITA. She serves on the CETA board, so when we do have problems regarding the CETA, we do have a representative that represents us there, and uh, she is that representative. And uh, the CIDB, uh, we are currently having a representative there who is occupying a position of the uh, deputy chair of the board, that is Chris Gianni, and who is also our stalwart. And yours truly, standing before you, now, uh, I represent Black Business at the Engineering Council of South Africa, as well as a lesser known council called SECLAB. That one deals with uh, landscape architecture. So I represent the BBCB at those very two important councils. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, at this juncture, I would like to invite uh, to the podium uh, a very important person uh, who is tasked with a very important responsibility of ensuring that Rona aspiring black industrialists do become exactly that, black industrialists. So our government has said he must lead this much to ensuring that there are black industrialists 
in this country. Now, we have been engaging with the DTI for a very long time to panel beat a policy framework to ensure that this policy gets implemented properly and we can see our members benefiting out of it. Last year, the DTI called us at Galaga. The President of the Republic was there and he has given marching orders, the President. The President said by next year, if there are no black industrialists produced, the team at the DTI must not invite him to that meeting of the black industrialists. So we said to the team at the DTI, we are here as black business to partner with you to ensure that when we get to that time next year, we have tangible results. We can say to the president, president, here are the people. And line them up and say, these are people that have been assisted by our government to become black industrialists. So I'm going now to hand over to Ndateta Kalani Tambani from the DTI, who is going to present to you this policy of the black industrialists. Some of you have not had an opportunity to see what the DTI has done to engage directly with the DTI. This is an opportunity to do so. So as he presents, let's please prepare those questions so that when we leave here today, we are clear as to what uh, is going to happen. Dada Tambani. Program Director and the, the President, thank you, thank you very much for inviting us to share with you the, the progress which we made so far with regard to this important work around the black industrialist. Program Director, you are launching me here now already. Um, let me just indicate that Program Director told me in the morning that I need to clarify the, the issue around the the 100 black industrialists and the so-called list uh, at the DTI with the names of um, potential black industrialists. So I promise him that I will clarify that matter um, during my presentation. But I think maybe before I go down the presentation, let me just say also indicate that the, it is true that the, we, we, we have got the Galaga resolutions um, which was uh, in March this year, where the, the, the president gave us marching orders really to say um, we need to finalize the framework for the black industrialists, but more importantly also to start implementing the policy. Um, so we've been hard at work uh, since then up to this far. I will, I will update you as far as we have done the, the work so far. Uh, quite exciting uh, developments from the DTI with regard to this policy. But more importantly, I will share you with the, with the road ahead in terms of what is the plan going forward with regard to this policy. It is important just to take note that obviously from DTI perspective, we are just responsible for ensuring that there is a, a, a policy environment for the implementation of the, of the black industrialists. It is important to enter into partnerships with uh, different stakeholders um, like BBC. Um, they've been working with us closely on this policy. But also going forward in terms of the implementation, it will be important to, for those partnerships um, so that we can then be able to assist each other in terms of achieving the objectives of, of this, very, this very policy. Um, I won't bore you with a lot of uh, background because most of you, you might be aware about what brought us to develop this policy. Mainly it has been mainly because of the slow transformation in the, in the, in the, in the economy. Uh, you will recall that one of the policies which we implemented from the DTI and in government is the triple BE. And in 2003, we embarked on a assessment of the impact of triple BE. And there were a lot of challenges which we have, uh, which we have identified, which led us now to then introduce new framework, which is now the black industrialists. But it is very clear that the South African's current economic challenges um, have got a lot of histories with regard to the challenges which have, which have been confronted this, this, this economy. And you will realize that the National Development Plan clearly outlines that in order, if we are really serious about changing the, 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 this, the economy, uh, it will be important for us to also change the patterns of the ownership and control 
And hence, you will realize that when we speak about black industrialists, the main focus will be more about the black ownership in that regard. It is a South, South African is a developmental um, state, and we are geared to implement what we call the radical economic transformation, which calls for a bolder approaches and clear targets uh, in that regard. And I think um, working closely with other government departments, uh, we have been uh, conversing um, in, um, the whole point around having bolder targets to ensure that we, we implement triple. I mean, we implement black industrialists in, the, in that regard, and you will realize as we go down the, the the achievements which have done around the policy that we are calling all the institutions of government to ensure that they work with us in terms of implementation of this policy. It is a policy which is uh, going to be implemented throughout the, the 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 entire government. So all three spheres of government, including the state-owned enterprises, are going to be part of the implementation of this of this policy. And again, we're going to be focusing on growing the, 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 the black companies in particular, but in, and to ensure that they, they become global competitive in the, in the, in the manufacturing sector. And, and we, 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 we identify manufacturing sector precisely because we, we, we know that there will be a lot of impact to other sectors in the economy. But you will realize when we start to identify the key sectors which will be affected, it will be broader than the manufacturing sectors and other related services in, in, that, in, that, in that regard. I think for the better part of this year, there's been a lot of discussions in the market with regard to what is the definition of this black industrialist. And you will recall during the, the Gallagher um, uh, session, um, there were a lot of uh, uh, questions around what do, we def what do we define as a black industrialist and what kind of a, a, an entity or an individual are we referring to as a black industrialist? I think at this point in time, throughout the consultations which we have done um, with different stakeholders, uh, with different players in the economy, captains of the industry, uh, engagements within government, we have come up, we have come up with a, a solid definition of black industrialists. The, the black industrialist refers to an entity owned by black South Africans uh, who will be in the uh, space of creating and owning a value-adding industrial capacity and they will need to be providing a long-term strategic and, pot and operational leadership to that bis particular business uh, and obviously providing a strategic and operational leadership in the business. All what we are trying to indicate there is that you need to be involved in the business as opposed to be a, just a passive shareholder in that particular business. We want to see black industrialists uh, getting involved on a day-to-day -day operation of that particular business. It goes further to say we will be looking for an entities which have got high level of ownership, which is more than 50%, and or exercise control over that business. That particular entity must be able to identify opportunities and develop business to take advantage of these opportunities. As I indicated, the main focus will be around the, the manufacturing and related sectors um, and uh, all the other sectors which are, which are identified in the industrial policy action plan. Um, and you will realize most of those particular sectors are more um, uh, manufacturing driven and we'll share, we'll share this con those kind of sectors as we go down this, this, this presentation. You will need to make a long-term commitment to, to that particular business in a medium to a long-term uh, in the form of a medium to a long-term investor. All what we are indicating is that for, for you to be able to qualify for a support for, from government with regard to black industrialists, um, we, we are proposing at least a 10 year, a minimum of 10 years um, involvement in that particular business. And I think what we, the lessons which we learned, especially from the BE perspective, is that um, black people will enter into a deal um, to, today, uh, two years down the line, they will want to get out of the, or they will want to, to, to sell the equity in that particular business. And again, what it does is that we, we, we find ourselves diluting the entire um, uh, important point of, of having black ownership. So to avoid that kind of a dilution, we want to set up a period of time that for you to be able to qualify to become a black industrialist, you will need to have a long-term um, commitment in, that particular, in the, that particular business and we are proposing at least a minimum of 10 years. Uh, we, we know and throughout the consultation process, we realize that 
there are other elements, uh, nine white, nine black people who are already coming up with new st strategies to, s to circumvent, so to speak, this black industrialist. That we know that uh, they will then come and buy you out, um, uh, your, your business, and that will obviously reverse the, the very same spirit of in ensuring that we transform this economy. Hence, there was a lot of uh, wisdom which went through identifying the period which we need to be, which you need to commit to as a black industrialist, as I propose, as I, as I indicated is that in the policy. We